All right, we're going to take a look at Avid Studio for iPad, which is a video editing app made by Avid for the iPad. It's got more features than iMovie. If you watch my other video about iMovie, this this will be one that you can use to compare and just see the things that, that Avid can do that iMovie can't do. So first of all, you need the iPad camera connection kit, which gives you a both an SD card and a USB connector that just plug into the into the jack hole on the bottom of your iPad and allow you to take your video from your camera and put it actually into the iPad. They're I think 30 or 40 bucks is what they charge for that. I know those pirate ones you can buy on eBay too. I can't guarantee that they work, but I've seen them for sale there cheaper. So Avid Studio allows you to make videos and edit them on the iPad. So let's take a look at this one. In this video I tried to uh, do all of the things that program will allow you to do. Now that you can either view it this way, which this is my preferred way just because you can you can see more of the actual video and then if you flip it you can see more of the clips that you're using. So maybe it's better to to have it this way while I'm showing you what it what it can do. So um, if you go to this menu you can see there are transitions. You can go do either do a, a fade in, fade to black, and then fade in, or a f fade from one scene to the other. Um, there's a thing called montages, which you you'll, you can see on this project. I start out with a montage. So this is something that does a it's sort of an automatic picture-in-picture -picture feature. So if you look at the motorcycle, then it flips, and then there's a picture of the road, and then it flips, picture of the bike and then the title of my movie. So you can't do anything that fancy in iMovie. Now, to create uh, pictures inside of a picture, you would just go down to your photos or your, uh, your movies and just click and drag one up into here. And then once there is a picture within your picture, you can move it around. I said you can move it around. Now let me highlight that. There we go. So now I've highlighted the clip. So now I can move it around. If I want the picture to be in front of my face, I can put it in front of my face. If I want to move it down, I can move it down. If I want to rotate it, you can even put it at screwy angles. If you want it upside down for whatever reason, let's say you were mounted your camera upside down, you can put it in there upside down. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back where I got it. You can see it runs a little bit slow. This is actually a pretty heavy thing that this little iPad is trying to do. Rotate it. Rotate it. And you can see as my fingers are getting farther apart and closer together, you can make it as big or as small as you want. And we'll just put it back down there. A little more. Now down here there's a ghost writing that says needs rendering for uh, smoother playback. So if, you, if I click that, it's going to go through and look at my movie and render everything so that I can preview it. If you don't do that, then when you go and roll through your clips to see what they look like, they're not going to look the way that you want them to look. They're going to be kind of choppy. So this goes and creates a, uh, an actual image that has both images compiled within it. So, so far we've seen the montage, we've seen the picture-in-picture. Picture. Um, there's also transitions fading in and out. There's animated... Uh... There we go. So now that that's been done, now when I play it, it looks like that. You also have control over, if you double-click a track, it brings up all of these properties. You can see there's volume, there's fade-in and fade-out at the beginning and end of it. And the volume is good because you can turn up and down the volume of the clip and then if you go down to your music, double click your music, you can control the music, the volume of the actual music as well. And kind of balance it out with the actual project. So if we roll through it, let's see what else we can find here. So 
So we're going through the movie. And right here you're going to see a transition, see how it fades from one picture to the next. That's a f uh, traditional fade transition. And now on that shot, I'm going to have to turn up the volume a little bit. On that shot, I was playing with the volume, so you can actually, um, you know, there's some music playing, and then I want you to hear the engine. So there, I cranked up the sound of the video. You can, so you can actually chop, you can chop the audio track into smaller pieces and adjust the volume on those smaller pieces, or, um, or, you know, chop the video into smaller pieces so some, some pieces of video can have a lower volume than others. Now you can see here, this is kind of good actually, it's, you can see how it's kind of choking on the video. You know, I'm not 100% sure that this app is completely ready for the iPad. Because the first couple projects I tried to do, it crashed on me and crashed on me, and then there was an app update and it got better, but it still, you know, it still seems a little bit shaky to me. I'm sure they'll they'll iron it out, but the things that they're trying to do are pretty heavy. You know, get all of these videos to work with each other. See, here's an example of a. That was a that's a still picture with a video up in the corner, and this is me riding on my bike. That was a fade to black and then a fade back in. There's another fade to black and fade back in. There's a person riding on a motorcycle. I'm going faster than a bunch of bicycles. And uh, then edited with Avid iPad app. So all in all, it's, it's a really good app, especially for you guys that like to do picture in picture stuff. I know that um, at least with the, the motorcycle people, you like to have a shot of you, you know, your head and a picture of the road that you're riding on <clears throat> at the same time. And this will definitely do that for you. I just, you know, honestly have to say I don't trust it. Now the nice, you know, in terms of being stable and, um, you know, not crashing and, and slowing down like you saw there, um, I could go reshoot this video and uh, until I get it to the point where it's not freezing up on me, but that wouldn't be real honest. And I think you got to know that exactly what you're getting into here. Now, the good news is it's, what is it, five bucks, you know? So for five dollars, <laughs> I think it's worth a, worth a gamble, especially if you're already doing video on the iPad and using iMovie. This just gives you uh, some more tools. The other thing I couldn't find on here, um, read the comments below, because I'm sure some people will comment on this video, but I couldn't find anywhere to record voiceovers, which is kind of big, a big deal. Like my son does Lego animation, and he does voiceovers for all the characters, and if there's nowhere to, uh, you know, to click it and turn on the microphone, then that's definitely a liability. Down here you see there's three music tracks, so you can do up to three tracks. So you could, you know, either use a voice recorder or use some kind of recorder to do a voiceover and then paste it in as an audio track. I'm not exactly how sure how you would do that using this app. I looked all over it and I couldn't find a place to to record uh, my own video. You you do have access to your music library, so you can put music in there. Um, you have access to the, a few different montages that you can put together or that they've put together, but you just drag whichever clip you want to be in the montage. Um, you have all of your picture libraries, so you can actually put still pictures in there. And then, um, of course, your video library. So if we play this video, go to, it, it ends up in photos. Now the other thing about it is um, 720p is the highest resolution that this thing will put out. So if you're trying to shoot 1080p, you, this won't do it. I would bet they're working on something for the iPad 3. So here's what it looks like in, in finished form. You got a montage flipping. There's a picture of my bike. There's the title. And I've had some trouble with the open source music. So there's your picture in picture. In that I've got copyright free open source music, but it, when I tried to upload this video, I got uh, busted. So I'm not actually even going to put this video on YouTube as a video by itself. But it, it came out pretty good. I like that shot of the air cleaner. The wheel spinning backwards. There's the sound of the engine. So then there's a fade out, fade in. Now one thing I noticed if you're watching this, did you see on, on that clip that just came up, I did a fade out, of, uh, the other one faded into this one, but you saw this, this scene freeze before 
before it started. So there seems to be a little bit of a problem if you're doing a picture in picture and then fading into another picture in picture. Let's see if it happens after this one. Nope. So the transitions aren't entirely smooth when you're going, they are smooth if you're just going from one video to another, but when you've got a picture in picture, it seems to freeze on it a little bit. And this isn't the uh, playback mode. This is actually, I've actually rendered this in HD form. So this is now a separate video file that we're looking at. So you know, I hope that helps you make some decisions. It's definitely fun to play with. You know, if I were editing things with iMovie, I definitely want to check this out too, if I were you and just kind of make a decision on which is best. I think on a project by project basis, you know, depending on how simple or how complicated you want to do a movie, uh, that would be what pushes you one way or the other. I've never had a, a crash or any kind of problem with iMovie, whereas with this one, it's been it's been kind of frustrating to use up until the last update, in which and, and now it's pretty good. It, it kind of hangs up and freezes a little bit, but but I haven't had it refuse to render a project since I patched it last. So I hope you like it. Hope that helps, and uh, happy movie making.